You said, son, God got the best today. I love you. Thanks for loving me like you did, buddy. Can't wait to see you again. Uh, that was the worst day of my life. Woke up, typical morning. I'm in my, my office, comes in, gives me a classic back hug. I had this perfect schedule of church and swimming and roasted marshmallows. Went into the front room, turned on YouTube football videos. Um... His brother came to join him, his six-year-old brother, Cash. Before that, Beckham had put on his swimsuit and was going to go swimming. He came into his brother and said, will you swim with me? It was one of the only times where Cash said, no, I want to stay in here and watch these football videos. So Beck said, okay. Beck went in the pool and he was just shooting hoops in the pool. My daughter, Ashton, came running in the house crying. And I was like, what happened out there? And then I walked onto the porch and looked down next to the pool and he was surrounded by my wife and uh, the paramedics had just started to get there and when so I went through all my stuff on the ground ran down kneeled next to him grabbed his hand and just fought with him they decided to take him off into the ambulance and went into the hospital and they hooked him up and tried to resuscitate him for another 15 or 20 minutes and you never forget when the doctor calms the team down and says we're going to shut it down This is an interview with Mark Cram. Four months ago, Mark tragically lost his best friend and 13-year-old son in a drowning accident. And during this episode, he goes into detail about the events of that day and describes some of the emotion that he was feeling as he discovered his deceased son. Mark is a... An incredible man. I've never seen somebody quite bounce back from a trauma this low this quickly. And one of the main reasons is because Mark still on a daily basis communicates with his son who has passed away to the other side. And in this episode, he shares how he does that. He utilizes a really unique breathwork uh, modality, actually teaches us the breath pattern on this podcast. And it's incredible. I've never felt as connected to the other side as I did listening to Mark talk about this. So this is a heavy one. It's emotional. It's real. It's raw. So strap in. Welcome to another episode of the Roller Coaster Podcast. Mark Cram, welcome to the Roller Coaster Podcast. Privilege, man. Thanks for having me. Every man's greatest fear in life is to unexpectedly lose a child. Mm. I think you could survey a hundred men, a thousand men, 10,000 men and, and say, what's your greatest fear? And if they were really thought about it, it would be that. I want to read something that you wrote. I think this was the first public statement mm. that you said after you lost your son, you said this. You said, to say that we are devastated is an understatement. Beckham was my pride and joy, my safe place, my best friend. He lit up every room he walked into. He loved with his whole heart and soul. He never backed down. He gave me a hug every morning and night and told me he loved me. He loved sports, loved his family, loved to laugh. Loved to tease. Loved to eat hot tamales and granola bars. He was my gas station treat buddy. He single-handedly pulled me through the depths of divorce at three years old. I spent my last full day with him watching him play football. I was so proud, and I told him that on the way home. Beck, you changed my life forever, son. Now I want to dedicate the rest of it to leaving your legacy. I 
You said, son, God got the best today. I love you with my whole heart and soul. Thanks for loving me like you did, buddy. Can't wait to see you again. Mm. What kind of thoughts or feelings come up when you hear your own words being read to you? Yeah, you're starting off strong, man. Um, the first word that comes to mind is it's an understatement. I, I, there's, there's so much more. And, you know, over the course of the last three months, I've felt seen, heard so much more. But uh, what are the emotions that come? Just so much love, man. He's, he's everything I described and so much more. And it's been a, a joyful experience to get to know him more and who he was through stories from friends and uh, teammates and coaches, you know, just how awesome he was. I, I knew he was great, but um, he was, he was changing the world, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Thanks for reading that. It's, that's a, that was a, a very, I mean, that was the worst day of my life for sure. Can you describe that day? So in detail from the time that you woke up in the morning to the time that you went to bed. Yeah. Do you want to hear it from my perspective or Beckham's? Cause I've, there's two different, two different stories, which is, has been extremely helpful in my, my healing journey. So where do you want me to start? I'd love to start with yours and then hear this side. Yeah. Um, woke up typical morning. Um, I'm in my, my office, I'm doing my morning studies, wakes up, comes in, gives me a classic back hug, asked me how I slept. Um, we were talking about the schedule that day. I was really, really excited about the, the schedule. We had this perfect schedule of, of, uh, you know, that included church and coming back and swimming and roasting marshmallows and like here, here's, here's what the day looks like. Um, and he, we, you know, we, we went back and forth, bantered back and forth, gave me a hug, gave me a kiss, did what he always do, did. Uh, went into the front room, turned on YouTube football videos. Um, his brother came to join him. His six year old brother, Cash, once Cash woke up, uh, normal day. Um, uh, I, I needed to go to take my, to go pick up my son's, my older son's, um, suit for church. It was at his mom's house. And, uh, before that Beckham had put on his swimsuit and was going to go swim. And he came into his brother and said, will you swim with me? And ironically, it was one of the only times where Cash said, no, I want to stay in here and watch these football videos. So Beck said, okay, Beck went in into the pool and, and um, we have it all on, on video actually. And he was just shooting hoops in the pool. And uh, I was, I left to go to um, take Boston to go get his suit. And we stopped off at Walgreens to grab treats for the kids that were teaching Sunday school that day. And uh, just, a, just a normal, just a perfect start to a Sunday. And uh, I walked in the house. I was having a conversation with my son, Boston. And my daughter, Ashton, came running in the house crying. And I was like, dude, what's, you know, what's what happened out there? And then I walked onto the porch and looked down next to the pool and he was surrounded by my wife and, and, uh, uh, the paramedics had just started to get there and my neighbor was down trying to resuscitate him. And so I went through all my stuff on the ground, ran down, kneeled next to him, grabbed his hand and just fought with him, you know? just cheered him on like dude you got this like like do not stop 
do not quit, like find your breath, find your breath. And so that lasted for about five, six minutes. And then they decided to take him off to, into the ambulance. So they rushed him out and uh, we went and grabbed our shoes and a t-shirt, jumped in our car and headed over to the hospital right behind the ambulance and went into the hospital and they hooked him up and tried to resuscitate him for another 15 or 20 minutes. And during that time, we had to kind of steer clear of him. But from from where I was, just, bud, come on, let's go. You got this. You got this. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. You just, you just are. There, there wasn't a single time where I wasn't like, okay, his, here comes the next breath. It's it's like it didn't register for a second that he was going to die. It was just like, you have got this as part of the process. Just bring yourself back to um, resuscitation. And uh, that just never came. And, uh, you know, you never forget when the doctor calms the team down and says, we're going to shut it down and uh give you your last moments with your kid and and uh man uh all i want to do is just touch him you know feel his hair feel his face um get as as much of it as i possibly could knowing that it was reality setting in like this is just this is happening like he is you you are you are losing your your best bud and uh family started coming and and uh surrounded him and and just i mean as you can imagine just just the 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 deepest deepest sorrow um as we gave him our last kisses and hugs and and um and then they took him away and, you know, talked about it multiple times. You get in the car and you come back home and you're just like, what do I do now? Like, what, what, what do I, where do I go? Like, what do I, what's the next, what am I supposed to do? And, and, uh, you know, your brain is just in such a fog and it's spinning so much. And so we gathered the kids and headed back home and, spent the rest of the day with family uh, in and out of, you know, just obviously having a really hard time with it and, and just the emotions that were coming to the surface and coming back in and spending time with the family and going back into the closet over and over again. And, and, and honestly, just the, the, the first three days since he passed were, uh, you just can't, you cannot describe it. And there would be no way to, to recreate it. You just, it's, a, it's the, the, the connection we had and some of the conversations I had had with God before he passed. And now just this reality of like, Oh my, it just, yeah, just very hard to describe. Uh, it's really indescribable. The worst pain you could, you could imagine. What's your wife's point of view or perspective on that same story? Like, where does it deviate with her having been the one that I think found him mm-hmm. in the pool? Yeah, she's had a different. She's had a different type of trauma because Cash went to go actually swim with him after he'd been in the pool for a while, and went back into Holly and said, "Hey, mom, I think Beckham's playing tricks on me." And so Holly went out and, and that, was, that was classic Beckham, like hold my breath so that I can make everybody worry. And then she realized like, this is not a joke. And she, she had, I mean, he was so waterlogged. So her, her story is she walked over and started yelling his name back. Come here. Our cash wants to swim with you. No response back. Come on, stop messing around. Oh my gosh. Jumps in the pool, has to lift him out. And, um, she starts to resuscitate. And one of the things that she'll tell you is that she 
fought her ass off during that time because the last thing that she ever wanted to see was my face when I walked out that door and saw him being resuscitated. And so she's, she fought like hell and Ashton came running out and she sent, uh, Holly sent Ashton running down the street to grab one of our, the, the first neighbor that she could find. One of our neighbors was outside. He came over and started taking over from Holly, but, um, it's been a really hard process and I'll tell you why her biggest fear before he died was to find a child in the pool drowned. Um, that was her number one fear. Um, and so she was living her, her number one fear. So from her perspective, it was the most traumatic thing she's, as she could ever imagine. And you just don't expect it's going to be the, the oldest, right? You expect it's going to be one of the little kids. Oh yeah. If it is, if it ever, God forbid does happen. Right. Um, is there anything different about, you know, you said you want me to tell it from my perspective or Beckham's. I yeah. mean, do you have a different sort of perspective on what he maybe experienced? Yeah. One of our, one of my healing processes was to go through an EMDR, which is, is basically you take a traumatic experience. I'm sure you already know. And you, you tell it from your side and then you, and then you tell it from, from yeah. Beckham's side. And so, and as you're doing that, there's different things that you do. And my perspective was I walked out, it was pure chaos. I'm kneeling next to him. I'm screaming like, come on, bud, keep going, keep going. All of these emotions are just flooding in like, do not do this. Do not do this. Take your next breath. Take take your next breath. And it's pure chaos. It is pure chaos. Well, Beckham's side of the story, by the time that was happening, he was hovering over his, his, his body in an eternal state of peace. And it's because he had passed away 30 minutes prior. There was, there was no suffering. It was, it was instant. And from that point forward, he was just there to support us. And so what I learned is when I was just in my, when we were all in this just extreme state of panic and and chaos and screaming and crying, he was as happy as he's ever been. And uh, from a conversation I've had with him multiple times, I had no desire to come back because he was in heaven. He, he was, he was filling yeah. this new feeling. And so as I've shifted to that perspective of like, you didn't suffer because your, your daddy heart, the first place it goes is, did you suffer? And the second place it goes is, are you, what are you like? Are you scared now? What are you like? Are you like, are you okay? Are you being comforted? Like we're all down here. Yeah. We're, we're going nuts, but at least we have each other. And so being able to, to speak to him and knowing like it was, it was instantaneous, no, no suffering. And that he was already in a state of eternal peace, like changes, it changes everything. Like, um, so his his story is, I was in the pool, was shooting hoops. I and you can watch it on film. I, I slipped into the water like very slowly, like didn't hit anything, nothing, and that was the end of it. And you know, I, I've been through such an incredible process over the course of the last three and a, and a half months, speaking to him every day, and just that process, and just knowing like what actually happened and what he's actually doing and what his day looks like. And it's just, it's just a different story. It's a, it's a totally different story. And I, my heart aches for families that lose their loved ones and don't understand how, where they are now, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't make it funner for us, but it definitely is, help the healing process be much faster. Yeah. How did he die? What it says is he drowned. What you watch, if you were to watch the video, you would say, 
I have no idea what just happened. So what it shows is he's shooting hoops in our pool and he just slowly falls back and that's the end of it. So eventually any closure on what, ha- I mean, did he pass out? Did he get lightheaded? Did he, could it have been suicide? I mean, so no, you, you, what, so when we, the day he died, I had had all this experience with breath work and conversations with God and just speaking to the other side. And so when he passed, there was no chance I was not going to speak to him. And not only that, I had realized really quickly that God had taught me how to do this nine months prior to prepare me for this. Yeah. And so when he passed, I wanted to ask specific questions. Are you okay? What are you doing? Did you suffer in those things? And one of the things we've talked about is, is because here's what happened. It says he drowned. And then we did the autopsy and you're hoping that the autopsy comes back and says, he had a heart attack. He had a brain aneurysm. He, he got electrocuted something and it still came back as he drowned. And I was in Virginia at my, on my anniversary when we got the report back and I'm like, damn it, God, like, why, why not just give us some closure? So I went to the room next to us in the Airbnb and I laid in my bed and I said, what really happened? And the answer I got was, I took him as peacefully as possible. Um, it was his time to go. And I, I have learned, Tyler, over the course of the last several months that we, in my opinion, we choose our hard. We choose our trials. I chose before I came to go through certain things in life, to learn certain lessons. And this was one of them. And he was a part of that choice. And so again, if you watch the video, you would have no idea what happened, but I know what happened. And that's that, that he was taken as peacefully and as quickly as possible. Um, because it was his time to go. Which means that you also believe that you were supposed to be gone and there wasn't supposed to be eyes on him and his brother was not supposed to save him. And there's so many things that led up to that moment where just so many. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. How do you communicate directly with your deceased son? Yeah. What I've learned in breath work is the higher the vibration, the thinner the veil. So when I first learned breath work, who's your coach, by the way, uh, the first person that taught me was Jen Jen. Coles. Yeah. (laughs) She's the best. She's amazing. Yeah. She, she was the first person that I learned breath work from phenomenal. Um, so I, I learned breath work. We start to, we build this basketball court in our house and it's indoor and we're like, we're, we build this to, have kids, the kids come and their teams to come practice here, and it, it, which we do, but it ends up turning into this place where we bring people in to breathe. So we'd bring Jen oh, in cool. once a month for their first experience, second, whatever it was. So I learned it from Jen. I'm sitting in my, I'm like, oh, dude, I'm never going to go a day without this. So every day before he passed, I'm sitting in my closet <laughs> Now that he's passed, I do it by the pool right by where he passed because that's where I feel I'm the strongest. But I'm laying in my closet and I'm like, you know what? While I'm doing breath work here, I might as well just do my, say my prayers. And my prayer, as many, you know, as happens with many, was speaking to God, not with him. Yeah. And so I'm like, I'm going to, I'm just going to pray. I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. And the first time I did breath work and then I said my prayer, I was like, dang. It's next level. Dude, like you're You're right here. And it turned into these conversations with him. Like, hey, brother, you here? Okay, let's let's go to work. Where am I going today? How can I help my daughter? How can I help my son? How can I show up better at work? What what about the situation with Holly? Like, and and so that's where I learned this uh, this ability to speak to the others to the other side. So then Beck passes. Same day, I'm just like, dude, in fact, the story was I was in this tailspin 
and Holly had gone into the room and Beckham had said to Holly, like whispered to Holly, have my dad come into the room and be in a quiet place so that he can hear me. I need to talk to him. And so she came in with, I was in with my family and brought me in. What did I do? I raised my vibration through breath work and just said, but like, I got some questions. And every single day since then, as part of my morning routine, the first thing I do is I wake up, I lay by the pool, I do a breath work for the first 15 minutes. And then the last five minutes, I say, hey, Beck, bring in the angels. And the angels come in and it's all of my family members that have passed are sitting next to me. And I don't know if you've ever gone to a Reiki session where they kind of essence you. Have you ever heard of that? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. sometimes they'll have sage. Yeah. So I, I'm laying at the pool. I've got all my loved ones next to me. This happens every day. As far as the eye can see, Tyler's angels that come in and I can, I can share with you as much as you want because there's a reason why they're there. And my son Beckham essences me. And then... That lasts about five minutes, and then I have my conversation with God, and then I have my conversation with Beckham, and then I go back into the house. And that's what I've done since the day he passed away. Wow. So I talk to him every single day. Wow. That's beautiful. Thank you to our sponsors over at Bucked Up. I love this company. I love their products, their apparel and their supplements. Recently, they dropped the mother of all pre-workouts, Mother Bucker. This is not for the faint of heart. This will make you want to claw your face off. So don't get stuck in traffic when you're headed to the gym. I love these guys. I love this company and I love their products. They are clearly the best tasting pre-workout on the entire market and they're number one for a reason. Bucked Up is my favorite workout brand, hands down. And they also have my favorite apparel, for working out and just for daily life. It's Lululemon like quality, but for a fraction of the price that's affordable. So head over to their site, buckedup.com, where you can check it out. And for 20% off their entire site, use the code Tyler Hall 20. Man, breath work is, I mean, it has totally changed my life as well. Um, some of the most spiritual experiences I've had in my life have been during breathwork journeys, for sure. I totally agree that the higher the frequency, the thinner the veil. I like the way that you said that. Um, I have things tattooed on my body mm. because of breathwork, for mm-hmm. example, experiences that I've had. It's hard to, and I don't know that it matters per se, but it's hard to convey mm-hmm. what it actually is to somebody who's never done it. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. It's really hard. Do you just, for people that haven't done it, that mm-hmm. think you're crazy, yeah. that think I'm crazy, that, yeah. you know, like, mm-hmm. what do you say to them? I actually just came straight from a, a Bingham High School. It's where I graduated high school. And my one of my best friends is the head football coach, and he asked me to come in. And, and I brought in a, another breathwork um, facilitator. And she had me speak to them first because I'm, I'm a man and they're all these, these boys. And, and, um, at this point, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care. I, I, you know, I know what I've seen. I know what I've felt. I'm not going to go a single day without it. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to tell as many people as I can about it because the ones that are ready are ready. And the ones that, that don't, they're not. And, but to answer your question, I'm going to give it with the example of what I do it for. Every day, my intention is to release the emotions that are not serving me so that I can refill them with the ones that I want. Mm. Whether that's anger, fear, frustration, anxiety, whatever, it doesn't matter, betrayal. There's been times I've been in breathwork sessions and and higher source, God, whatever it is, says today we're we're... We're breathing out the betrayal that you've had in business the last 20 years. Okay, I guess we're going there today. And you're breathing and I'm seeing these names of humans that that did bad business 17, 18 years ago. I'm like, I thought I'd forgotten about that guy. But for some reason, 
It was filling up space in my my body, which can create, you know, I mean, Jen's story herself, like chronic pain, depression, yeah, totally. all the different things. And so the way that I describe it is breath work allows us to release the thing the the emotions that are not serving us so that we can replenish them with energy, light, God, love, connection, whatever it is. So that's that is how I describe it. And if you ain't buying it, that's okay. It's all good. Someday you will. <laughs> Someday you will, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, and yeah, and if you do like the the advice that I always give people is just what do you have to lose? Mm-hmm. Just lean into it, mm-hmm. do it, right? Because surrender. Don't let your ego get in the way of not breathing and giving yourself a beautiful opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, what kind of breath pattern are you doing in the morning to get into that flow state that you talked about? Great question. You know this being a, an experienced breathwork guy that it's just like anything else. The more practice you have, what used to take eight nine eight nine minutes to drop in takes me 30 seconds to drop in yeah. and so it it's a my you have a lot of people that do the three part breath in in out mine is just in out in out if i do the in in out the it, i just get too caught up in it yeah. it's very like i get heady um and so my routine is same music every day i breathe in i breathe out it gets harder and harder more intense, more intense. Yep. About the 50th breath, I hold it at the top. I hold it till I can almost not hold it anymore. While I'm holding it, I'm I'm just kind of like breaking up the the negative emotions. I'm I'm kind of hitting my body. And then when I get really close to not being able to hold it anymore, I sit, I wake up every chakra, just cinch my entire body. And then when it's I can't hold it anymore. It's one gigantic release, and I'm I'm subconsciously watching these this black smoke with whatever word is, even if that's just negative emotions, mm-hmm. negative energy coming out of my mouth, and then I'm settling back in when I as I'm breathing in light, love, connection, and then I just repeat that until that final song comes on. I call in the angels, and then we go from there. How do you know when to top hold? Are you counting your breaths? When I first, great question. When I first started, I would count 50, do that cycle, 60, do that cycle. Now it's just, I've done it so. Yeah. 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 That's cool. I, I, I want to integrate more daily practices around this because my routine right now is roughly once a month, I'll fly up to Utah and do one-on-one with Jen Mm. or every quarter I'll fly her out to Arizona and I'll get a group together. Um, or, or I'll have her at things I'm facilitating sure. or helping with, right? So, um, but about once a month. But I would love to, you know, try what you're recommending mm-hmm. on a daily basis and see what that does for my life. It's to to be where I am three and a half months into this is an absolute miracle. And it's because of breath work. Yeah. Yeah, I can feel that. What do you think God needs Beckham for? Mm. You know, it's been this evolution of like God took him and 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 honestly, Tyler, I'm I'm not a victim of cruelty from God. That doesn't, in my opinion, that doesn't exist. Um, I have so many feelings around that. Um, I feel like Beckham chose this for himself. Um, it was part of his process. And I have a a lot of read a lot of books and have a lot of thoughts on that. Um, But at this point, I don't feel like God took him. I feel like Beckham was in choice. Mm. And now that he's on the other side, what I, what I can tell you is from conversations with him, their number, the, the time that they spend the most on the other side is helping us on this side to return back to our higher source safely. Mm. They spend lots and lots of time. I I believe that heaven is right here. It's just a different frequency. It's a higher frequency and they are around us all the time. And the reason why that I've had this conversation so many times, like 
Why do you, why do legions and legions of angels come in every day to do this? And the response is they want to converse with the other side so bad that when they can't, the second best thing is to hear someone else do it. Yeah. It fills their cup. It fills their souls. Yeah. Wow. And so, uh, Beck's, Beckham's doing some amazing things. For, he was a he was instrumental in this putting together the pieces for this course. Um, he's busy, man. He's busy doing the work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna. I mean, one of the things I was gonna ask is, what is I have written down in my notes? What is the work that he's doing now? Um, some of the things that I've seen you you talk about is this i this idea or hashtag that you use at the end of every post where you say be like back mm-hmm. you also put some numbers that i don't understand the significance yeah. of them one yeah. plus one equals three you know what what are the maybe just describe how how does his legacy live on mm-hmm. and how will he make an impact in people's lives from here on out i hope that every parent that loses a child has some sort of restitution through getting to know what their child is doing on the other side. It is such a heart healer for me to know the work that he is doing. And and to answer your question, how does it, how does it show up? Well, as part of my, my healing journey, I have opened up to the world the other side wants to hear from you. They really, really, and truly do. And if you're afraid to access the other side, start with this 13-year-old boy that will show up just grinning from ear to ear. Start with him, and it has been so incredible. People from all over the world respond and say, hey, I took you up on your, your challenge, and I reached out to your son, and here is how he showed up for me. I was in a race, and... I was really, really struggling and I heard his story and like, I didn't want to keep going. And I thought, oh, what would number 13 do? And I just kept running and he was with me or I saw him as a dragonfly, like in the middle of my bike race or I was, I was being bullied at school or whatever it is. And, and we literally hear these stories every single day. And so how is he showing up? He's showing up in so many different ways during people's physical, uh, you know, physical activities or the tests that they're taking or the, or the relationships that were, they're struggling with or, or just so, in so many different ways. And it's just such a heart healer. And to answer your question, his two favorite numbers were one and three. One and 13, sorry. One plus one equals three is synergy. And now we have one person here on earth and I have, we have one person there in heaven and that, and together we can accomplish so much more. Mm. So that's what that equals. That's beautiful. Uh, what is this course going to provide and, and who do you recommend, you know, participates or signs up for this? The beauty of it is it doesn't matter where you stand or what you believe. This is a course for everyone. Where it started, I was telling you a little bit about it. My wife was woke up, woken up in the middle of the night, and higher source, God, we call it God, said, "You need to create this course. This is what it's going to be called. This is who you're going to hire to to, to create it. Here's all the people that are going to be in it, and what the course is designed for is to wherever you are, I'll, like help you to learn how to level up your connection to God." yourself, the other side, if, the, if that's what you, you want to do. And so, um, in my religion for years, it was like, okay, I have to be kneeling and I have to be folding my arms. And if I wander off at all, like he didn't hear me and there's just so formal and it was so, it was just so monotonous. And I, multiple times I got done with it. I'm like, man, I'm just missing it. And then I learn that instead of speaking to him, we should be speaking with him. And so the course, first of all, talks about how 
God is a good God or source is a good source. He wants to talk to us. He wants to hear from us. He loves to have the conversations. So that's that. And if you have, now that I have these conversations with him, it's literally like, what should I do with this situation at work? Boom. Instead of trying this, trying this, trying this, trying this, my daughter struggles with certain things. And it's like, how how can I help Ashton with this? And in the past, it would have been, I mean, you know, parenting and she tried different things and then something sticks. Now it's like, hey, God, can you tell me what to do when it comes to this? Boom. Okay, let's go to work. And so it has nothing to do with religion and has everything to do with connecting more with higher source, connecting more with yourself and connecting more with the other side, if that's something that's important to you. What's the most um, miraculous insight that you've been given from Beckham since he passed away? Mm. Um, That we choose our heart. That as far as we swing on this side of the pendulum, as as far as we can go, so as far as deep as you get into the hard and the sorrow and the the difficult is as far as you can go here. And behind every tragedy, every failure is, Dad, there's a lesson. What's the lesson? Like, I don't judge anybody that loses someone, how they respond to it. Like that, that's, it's the worst thing ever. But there's such a massive, massive lesson behind his passing. And, and the, the, the most enlightening thing that he has helped me to understand is what that is. Like, what's the purpose behind a 13 year old boy passing at 13 year, years of age who left his mark in so many different ways, but is now continuing to leave his mark here and here. Mm. And so number one lesson is behind every tragedy, every failure, everything that we go through, because life is hard sometimes, man, is, is a lesson to be learned, a new baseline to be had, and a new opportunity to impact. Yeah. Yeah, this perspective is really um, unique to me because when you lose somebody, right? You're the again, a man's greatest fear is the sudden death of his child, an unexpected sudden death of his child, right? And I, I think the reason that's such a great fear is because you always think man, what are all the experiences that we've had? What are all the things that he did? What has he done? What did he do? Right. But it's like the way that you're framing this is like, no, he is continuing to do. He's continuing to be, he's still a part of our lives. And that's like, that that really eliminates the fear of like losing somebody who you're close to. Yeah. He's just getting started. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it's it's been such a heart healer for us to know that it's continuing yeah. and that he's he's actually in a lot of ways more a part of our lives than he's ever been. Yeah. In some ways, you know? Yeah. <sighs> to to wrap this up, uh, I want you to look into your camera, which is that one. And I want you to share a message from Beckham, your son who's passed, that you think he would share with people who are struggling, uh, who have recently lost uh, somebody who they're close to. Mm. My message would be that the first thing that he would tell you is that they're happier than they've ever been. One of the things that has helped me tremendously is knowing his life after his his earthly life. And so I can assure you, there's no doubt in my mind that your loved one that has passed away is in a better place. It's not going to take away your pain, but if you'll 
settle into that and recognize that they are happier than they have ever been and they are learning more than they've ever learned and they're enjoying life more than they've ever enjoyed it. And truthfully, they wouldn't come back to this life because it's so good up there is the first thing that I would tell you. And the second thing that he would tell you is what is what can be learned from this what is the, what is the the opportunity and the purpose for this because as you work through that your ability to help other people that have gone through the same thing is tremendous and the world needs you to be a stable ground and a positive force for someone that has had someone pass away and has worked through it and recognized the purpose and understood the lesson in it so that you can now show up in a space of helping someone else that is about to go through the same thing. Um, It's hard. It's excruciating hardly hard, but it's beautiful if you can see it for what it truly is. That's what he would say. Well said. Mark, thank you for joining the Roller Coaster Podcast. Appreciate it. That's a wrap.